All right, welcome back to another Sears Angler podcast. We have a pretty cool episode for you guys today. Uh, having a good buddy of mine, Mr. Brent Butler, uh, who is also on the Douglas team. Um, Brent is a Lake Chickamauga Hammer. Um, I believe he won a tournament there, I believe it was 2018, 2019. Uh, he won an FLW on Lake Chickamauga. Uh, but the dude is a hammer wherever he goes. He puts together, he puts the work in, and he, he reaps the rewards right for himself. So I'm going to get him on here to talk about a bunch of different things before I do uh, a few different things for you guys. One, uh, the giveaway is running till episode 100. There's three different winners, an angler prize pack, a Douglas prize pack, and a queen tackle prize pack, where you can just go to my Instagram page at Serious Angler, enter to win. The, the rules are very simple to enter. Just follow the companies. That is it. So head over to my Instagram at Serious Angler on Instagram. You can enter to win. Three different packages to be three different winners that will be announced on episode 100. Also, if any of the any of you guys listening or watching that are fans or maybe fans of Serious Angler Podcast and you want some apparel, uh, go to the link in the Facebook or Instagram page, and I'll actually it's linked down below as well. Uh, if you want to purchase any apparel, uh, any of the apparel helps me out, um, and also it shows support of the podcast, and that's something I greatly appreciate. Not only myself, but everyone who's been on the show greatly appreciates the support as well. Um, and a huge shout out to Douglas Outdoors for sponsoring the Serious Angler podcast. I really cannot do this without you guys and your support. Um, today was pretty fun. My buddy Steven and I went uh, out to a local lake and uh, got on some frog fish, got on some some fry garters. And I've been throwing a, uh, I threw a five inch mag draft and I threw it on the Douglas 715F which is naturally my spinnerbait um, and chatterbait rod. It was a little on the heavier side, but the way it handled the fish and the way it kind of it handled that mag draft was perfect. So I think for that 5-inch mag draft, I'm going to start throwing that 715. I'm going to experiment with the 744, but that was pretty awesome. It was a fun day. Um, we basically had a one-two punch where we used the mag draft to find fish and then basically threw a wacky rig or a Texas rig or whatever back at them, and they were so triggered by that mag draft that they kind of bit whatever you threw at them. So... That was pretty awesome. So thank you to Douglas Outdoors. And without further ado, Mr. Brent Butler, let's get on the show. All right, we are recording. Mr. Brent Butler, what's going on, man? How's it going, buddy? It's doing well. Doing well. It's uh, it's it's very nice here in New York right now. We had, we had a day of mid 60s, and we've had you know 90s and high 80s the past week. So it's a uh, it's a nice break from the sun. I don't know about you, but I hate hot hot weather. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's been about the same here actually. Uh, uh, today, I mean, last week was, man, I was at Del Hall for four days and it was scorching. I mean, it was scorching. You couldn't. It, it's you didn't even want to tie anything on because the latch was going to scald you. <laughs> I was pouring water on it before I touched it. It was so hot. You know, there's hardly any wind at all. That's funny. Yeah. Does it? Does the boat deck get super hot for you? Oh yeah. Yeah. You got any like tips to, to work around that? Like, are you a flip flops barefoot guy? Yeah, I wear, I wear flip flops. Yes, uh, the guys that go barefooted, man, I, I don't know how they do it, uh, but I'm definitely definitely flip flops. And uh, yeah, so I mean, it gets too hot. I mean, I just take a weigh in bag or something. You know, I got my boat and I'm pouring water on the deck, you know, to cool it off. I hear that. Yeah. <laughs> Almost be <laughs> fishing with your legs dangling in the water, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. I, I've seen I've seen guys do that. Well, they'll, they'll sit next to their trolling motor and they'll be casting along a bank and they'll use their hand to control their trolling motor while they're sitting in, in the water. Uh, nice. That's funny. Cool, dude. So before we get into the podcast, you know, for everybody watching and listening, tell them a little bit about yourself and then you know how you got into fishing and who kind of who brought you to to catch your first fish. Okay. Well. Uh... You know, I'm Brent Butler. I'm 40 years old. I got into fishing. Uh, my dad, he would take me uh, just just to walk the banks there. We lived, uh, where I grew up about uh, two miles from Teleco Lake, and I uh, still live about a mile from the lake now, but different section of the lake. But anyways, so my dad, he would uh, he would take us, uh, my brother and I, crappie fishing. There's only two of us. He's, he's older than me, but uh, we'd go crappie fishing and things like that. My dad never was you know, heavily involved in bass fishing by no means. We didn't have a boat, no, no nothing, just walk the banks. And uh, so one day I caught my first bass on a little bitty crappie jig. Well, it was double-tailed grub. 
is about five and a half pounds. I remember it like yesterday. And uh, I was, uh, my brother, he's like, oh, let me take it show dad. Let me take it show dad. You know, and he picks it up and he's going to run up the rocks because dad, dad was on the other side of the road and uh, he dropped it. Man, I was so sick, you know, didn't get to show dad and everything, you know, I was all bummed out. But anyways, uh, that, that's what I used to do. I mean, we'd go and walk the banks and stuff like that. So uh, whenever I was about 11, 12 years old, uh, I got to see uh, the first Bassmasters tournament. And uh, when I seen that, you know, Bob Cobb, you know, still, you know, Hall of Famer in my book, you know, the best, greatest announcer. I mean, uh, I, I miss the old days of the Bassmasters for sure, you know. And uh, I was hooked. I, I didn't even know a tournament even existed. I mean, what that was. And I seen that, and I was like, man, you know, you can you, you can get paid to catch a you know. So, uh, yeah. you know, I thought that's it. So that's, uh, I focused on that a lot. Uh, you know, just fishing, just fishing and fishing every chance I got. And uh, end up later finding out, you know, there's a little local Thursday night tournament, Gary Joe Gibson. Uh, run and so my dad he would uh, he would take me down there whenever I was 13 14 years old and I'd be the kid at the ramp with two rods in my hand you know asking you know somebody pulled in by themselves hey it's all right if I go with you you know I I didn't care anything about their spots you know I just wanted to go compete I just wanted to get in the tournament and go compete so uh, I was telling the young guy yesterday that's on the high school team you know uh, the same kind of deal you know I asked him how many weigh-ins he went to but I I hardly ever missed a one. I was fortunate for that. I'm at least 80. I guarantee there's at least 80. And out of those 80 times, three times I got to go. Three out of 80. But I never quit. I was there at blast off, and then my dad, he'd take me back to the weigh-in. So I'd watch and see who won, you know, and just built relationships with guys like that. And uh, But anyways, I guess that's why I put emphasis on, you know, taking kids fishing and everything, too, because I got rejected so much. But I didn't quit. Um, so as it progressed on uh, later, uh, whenever I was 16, I got the opportunity to get in the boat with a guy, and uh, I worked at a local uh, uh, food market slash hardware slash fishing store around here. It's just what it's small town where I, where I live at, yeah. and uh, so uh, whenever I'd go fishing, we had the instamatic camera. I'd catch one, take a picture, keep it in my pocket. Guys come in by tackle, I'd be like, "Hey, look here, look here, what I caught." Whether it was a crappie, a bass, or you know whatever, it didn't matter. And so. One guy, you know, he kept he kept coming in there, and he said, hey, I'll tell you what. He said, you show me all these pictures. He said, you ever fish a tournament? I was like, no, I've only got to go to one. I said, but I'm, I'm really wanting to go. And uh, so he said, I'll take you fishing, and uh, well, I'll see how you do. You know, you prove yourself, we'll go. So well, it was like my second trip in a boat. And I remember it like yesterday. All I knew was a spinnerbait. I had it, I had two rods, a spinnerbait, and maybe a few jigs, but spinnerbait is my favorite. So, come find out I had the same spinnerbait tied on that he threw. I fished behind him, caught 12 and a half pounds, he caught six pounds, and he said, you're in. I'm like, wait, <laughs> you know, so uh, yeah. so the first thing that happened was, you know, he, he takes me to a tournament, and his name's Brad McDonald, and I'm very appreciative, you know, for what all he done for me, but uh, he takes me offshore. Man, I didn't know nothing about offshore, I was like... We're 100, 200 yards from the bank. Where do I throw? I didn't even know what a buoy was on the lake. You know, I had no idea what we were fishing. So it's yeah. funny. You know, he, he taught me a lot. I mean, how, you know, there there wasn't even a GPS, you know, at that time, unless it's handheld. So he taught me about, you know, understanding lake maps, reading lake maps, you know, contours, reading a flasher, uh, all that, you know. So, I mean, uh, you know, I'm very appreciative of that. I mean, we, we struggled a lot, but I learned a ton you know, understand the fish and the body of water. And anyways, long story short, you know, keep going. Uh, he get, he was uh, able to get me involved within the Federation Club in uh, 97. And uh, he was supposed to be 18. I was 17. So I kind of told him I was 18 and got my foot in the door. Fished as an <laughs> on-boater. And uh, ended awesome. up getting to the state championship in 98 as an on-boater. There's about 20 guys, and, and I made the cut, the top six. And uh, so I got to go out there, and uh, it was a good experience. The tournament went horrible for me. I was a co-angler. One guy, you know, just got bad draws. One, one guy was a bad draw. The other guy was a good draw. But it's just fishing, you know. And mm -hmm. uh, so it's a good experience. Just let a fire want to go more. And then after I graduated, I got my, finally got my first boat. And uh, before that, I just had a 
B bottom a guy give me that leaked and you could fish 20 minutes, pull it on the bank, dump the water out, jump back in and keep going. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I finally got my first fiberglass bass boat. Uh, I didn't even know how to drive it. I swear to you that I loaded Brad's boat, loaded and unloaded off the trailer, but I never got to drive it. I'd watched him, you know, with trim, trim it down, take off and, and all that good stuff, you know. So uh, my brother and I, we went to fish the Thursday night tournament. And so immediately I run to places that we always walk, fishing the banks and everything. And uh, so some old guys in a bullet run about 85, 90. Of course, here we are in the little old 150 blazer, you know, running about 60 at best. You know, of course, they outrun us there to the particular area, which is fine. So myself, man, you know, I grew up old school, unwritten rules of the game. Out of respect, I went over to a different area. It's, it's just a big old pre-spawn spawning area, and we basically kind of split it. So, uh, long story short, it was flooded. Uh, the water's about two foot out of the banks, and uh, I end up, my brother and I caught about, I think it was about 13 pounds and one by a pound and a half, and those guys in the bullet got second. So they were all being out of shape and everything, and uh, I'd seen them countless times fishing that entire area because this area was two miles from my house, but that's where we walked the banks at a lot. And yeah. uh, so I talked to him after weigh in. I'm like, look, guys, you know, you've seen me countless days walking the bank here. I just got a boat. And that's the only place I even know to go to fish, you know, got the confidence in and everything. So that kind of smoothed it over and set an example, you know, and everything was good to go after that. But uh, so then it starts progressing, you know, fish a few local bigger events. You, you know, we had the bite trail, uh, which was, you know, give away a boat every tournament. And uh, one of those, I made uh, a bad decision. My partner and I, at the time of that event, I should have won a boat then. Uh, there's a crappie fisherman sitting on a brush pile about, about 40 yards off the bank. And uh, I didn't want to go between him and the bank. If I had to do over, I would I would have trolled up there and asked him if I could just fish by him because it was leading into a cove and I knew he was crappie fishing. Long story short, I don't. Some old boys roll in and uh, pull up. I ask the crappie fisherman the same thing. Yeah, sure, I'm just fishing the brush pile here under the boat. Watch them bust 17 pounds right there in front of us, and they won. So I learned something there, you know. Uh, anyway, so it starts, you know, progresses more and more, and uh, that's it. I mean, just, you know, fishing local stuff. The Federation, uh, I was fortunate enough to win uh, the State Federation uh, on Chickamauga. And, uh, gosh, I have to look up here. It's on the dang wall. Uh <laughs> Six oh five oh six, I guess. Uh, I won Angler of the Year in oh seven. Uh, I don't know. I got several plaques up there, but I was fortunate enough to win it, and it gave me an opportunity, you know, to go to Alabama River and um, potentially make it to uh, the Nationals Federation Nationals. Um, I was so close, didn't make it. Finished uh, third in the state and about fifteenth overall. So I still, you know, I felt good about it, but I didn't at the same time, you know. So. It just, it just made me want to keep trying harder. So, anyways, keep going. Uh, fished, I, I found some of the best local trails at different lakes and started jumping in those tournaments to see where I stood at. Now, granted, it's just like everybody else got their deal. I donated a lot, but it made me a better fisherman. You know, decision making, times, understanding, uh, everything like that. So, uh, then uh, I got to fish my first, what you know, people call the Coast event, and uh, it used to be an FLW series in uh, 08. Yeah, 08. Mark Rose ended up winning that. That was my first big deal. I got about mm, 1,500 sponsored to me. It cost three grand uh, to get in it, and I paid the rest out of my pocket. And uh, man, I was freaking on them. The, the first day of the, of the event, I lost enough uh, to, I mean, blow it away by a landslide. I mean, like 26, 27 pounds. Had them all 10 foot from the boat, uh, and every single one of them come off. In practice, you couldn't bait them off your lure. So uh, I learned a lot there. I end up pretty much bummed out. I didn't make the, the right decisions because the conditions changing, and uh, I knew at that point I better put the brakes on. I, I was like, I've got to learn some more stuff before I get back here. So 
I kept looking, you know, at, uh, you know, keeping tracks of results and everything, saving my money. Then uh, when uh, FLW came back in 12, 2012, no, 17, I'm sorry, because uh, I had to look at my dang plaque over here. I, I waited, and that was the next one that, that I got in, so I'd been saving up. And uh, so I, I got me my chance, uh, you know, they're typically a three day event. The first day was canceled. Dude, high winds, so full field fished. So uh, on Friday, you know, I put a lot of time, a lot of hours in, and I drew a, uh, I drew a local guy, great guy, super guy, all that. But I'm still old school guy. I mean, even though I'm 40, I mean, I was taught by a lot of old school people. And uh, you know, I thought well, I'm just gonna try to wing, wing this first day, because uh, he was straightforward, like, hey, I signed up for the event. <clears throat> Excuse me. He said, I'm just wanting to find some good fishing spots. It's like, dang, gone, you know. So, anyways, I just went fishing, tried to get me 17 pounds, wound up with 12 something, and lost a five pounder. It cost me uh, probably winning the deal. But second day, drew a guy from out of state, only been there one time. Super good guy. We're still good friends. Talked to him quite often. And he is old schooler like me. I understood the unwritten rules of the game. And I said, buddy, we're going to have we're going to have a blast because I've got them dialed in. Might take a little bit. And uh, anyways, roll out, hit a few spots, and uh, got my timing down. Man, we caught the fire out of them. I, I sat down and actually spooled up his rod and reel, his cranking rod, so he'd have enough line to make it out there to keep the schools going. He's like, man, I've never seen nobody like you. I was like, look, dude, you want to win, I want to win. You want to do good, I want to do good. But it's going to take both of us regardless. You know, I just... I don't want to be that guy, that bad draw, you know. So, uh, long story short, I ended up having the biggest bag of the tournament. It was almost 29 pounds. It's 28 something. And I got Lunker, day two Lunker. And uh, that kind of got my start. I won uh, $11,000. I saved it and uh, paid off just, just a couple small things, but I saved it. I mean, I was like, look, they get to come back, you know, I'll, uh, you know, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get back in. <clears throat> And I didn't want to just jump in the rest of them right off the bat. You know, I was trying to play my cards right. So, yeah, you know, so then, then they come back uh, again and uh, tell you a crazy story. Uh, you know, perfect story, if that's good. Is that, is that fine? Yeah, yeah. Talk yeah, about okay. So, so uh, what, uh, you know, my team partner, Seth Davis, all right, uh, if, if anybody follows me on Instagram, Brent Butler Fishing or Facebook, you'll see on there. So, Seth and I have been friends. I, I've had Seth fishing since he was 13. His dad took him, but we got connected through a guy through the Federation. And uh, but he and I have been fishing for, gosh, about 17, 18 years, I guess. I don't know. So anyway, so Seth and Jacob Wheeler have been friends since Jacob was high school. They met at the High School World Finals. So I, we've, uh, I've known each other for a long time. So... Uh, Anyway, so Jacob and I were out messing around one day fishing, and uh, my wife calls me, and her uh, her boss had passed away. So you imagine, all right? So you you, you know everybody pretty much relies on two incomes. I mean, I'm not wealthy, no freaking millionaire. I'm just a hardworking country boy. And uh, <laughs> anyway, you, you you imagine that just gone at the blink of an eye, you know? And this is like in July. I'm like, man, alive! So you know, I had a little bit more money saved up, but I still had 10,000 money saved up from the coast. All right, so I was being conservative. Well, fast forward, uh, you know, what are we gonna do? You know, my wife, job, house payment, and all that. So I took uh, I took money, paid all the bills that I could up until January. And my wife didn't even know it, but I, you know, I, I told her, I was like, look, this is what we're gonna do. And uh, the first word, this one reason why I married her, I love her to death, she's worth a billion dollars. Actually, she's priceless. The first words were, do you have enough <laughs> money? <save. laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you have enough money to fish the coast if it comes back? That was her first thing, the first thing she said. And I said, honey, it doesn't matter to me, wh whatever. We gotta have a roof over her head. You know, we gotta make sure the bills are paid and all that. So, you know, it's kind of one of these, one of these meant to be deals. So. You know, fast forward to uh, 17 and, uh, or I'm, I'm sorry, 19, and uh, went there in 
So Seth ended up in his job. He couldn't fish. So we kind of had it worked out prior to, though, what section of the lake he might run, what section of the lakes I might run. I mean, granted, we're sharing water, but we both have the same history. You know what I'm saying? We know the, the lake really well. So he was out. And uh, so I kind of, you know, freed up some other stuff uh, that I could run. And I was fortunate enough to get uh, good draws and uh, the stars aligned that second day. You know, I crushed a big bag I got sitting over here. It's like 37 and a half pounds. And had me a big mural painting of it. And uh, it was just very blessed and fortunate uh, to pull off the wind, you know. And yeah. so, so by, by winning that, it opened a lot of doors for me uh for uh, in, a, in a lot of areas um so you know fast forward i mean to right now i mean that's given me uh you know i've never been able to fish an entire division of a bfl uh, or travel a lot as much or anything like that so i'm getting to this year and uh fishing all three events of a you know one coastal series um uh, so i mean i'm just blessed dude but the, but the first thing i did they asked me you know after i won said so what are you going to do? You going to Disney World? Everybody says, you know, I'm going to Disney World if they win. I said, no. First thing I'm going to do is pay my wife's car off. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I did. Oh. Pay my wife's car off, and uh, and that's it. Other than that, just micromanaging, man. So uh, yeah, it's been uh, been been a fun ride so far. You know, just looking forward to the rest of the year for sure. Heck yeah, man. So uh, I know Chickamauga seems to be your bread and butter, right? That's your. Uh, it's one of your. Is that your home lake, then, Chickamauga? No, 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 I live an hour from there, uh, for, to, from the river end, and I live an hour and 40 minutes, you know, to the lower end, to like Harrison Bay area. Um, and what it is, you know, Teleco Loudon, I mean, I can literally be at Teleco one mile from my driveway right here, but um, it's uh, it used to be really good, and economic development, stuff like that come in, uh, a lot of... Uh, a lot of uh, high dollar subdivisions and stuff and they didn't like aquatic vegetation and killed the grass in the late 80s and uh, it killed the fishery. It went downhill from the late 80s on. Now it's so tough you might see in the springtime you'll see a couple bags of smallmouth uh, anywhere from you know 17 to 20, 20 pounds just a short period of time and then it falls off used to i mean when i first even started even going to the weigh-ins in 92 93 in a three-hour deal if you didn't have at least 16 to 20 pounds you might as well not even weigh in now it might be six pounds may win eight pounds may win maybe 10 but the the weights wow. are really low uh it's definitely not what it used to be they put so many chemicals in there that it that it just literally contaminated the soil really bad and uh, so the fish don't have a good spawn, uh, things like that. And two, within water fluctuations, it's like TVA will have the water up, fish pull up the spawn, they'll be there for just you know a couple of days, and then boom, they drop it two foot. So then the beds are kind of dry. So Jeez. you know there's not been a real good uh, reproduction and uh, things like that in, in the chain. So, uh, but eventually, um, I just got tired of making boat payments and competing on what we nicknamed the Dead Sea, Teleco, you know, because it's rough. And I said, you know, I'm, I'm not going to learn anything else unless I start traveling. So I want to go to a lake that I know has fish in it. And, uh, you know, and if I don't catch them, it's my own fault. So that was in uh, about 2002 that I started putting a lot of time in down there. And uh, they had just stocked the Florida string in 98, 99. So they wasn't really progressing yet. You know, the, the weights were still low or lower. And uh, one point in time, I mean, 10, 12 pounds, it, it, that's what it would take to win uh, win a tournament, you know, down there. So <laughs> it started progressing and everything, you know. I mean, I basically just kept putting time in and, you know, climbed with it as, as the lake did, you know, uh, as well as a lot of other good fishermen because there's – there's a there's a lot of good fishermen on Chickamauga. I mean, that's oh yeah, that's yeah. Um, just last night I had on. I'm, I'm sure you know the name. You know, Jacob Fouts from uh, he won in yeah. college division. He's a he's a Chickamauga yeah. guide now, and he he talked about Chick and how he moved down there when he was in 15 or 16 years old in high school. Talks about how uh -huh. special that place is, and 
And I spoke to you a little bit about the classic, how the chicks like that one place I've I've always really wanted to go to. It's just yeah. a special fishery, and for good reason. You know, I have I've heard so many, countless countless stories of how amazing Chickamauga fishes year round, but it's. It definitely gets pressured for sure, but you you got to be you got to have some talent to to find the fish, but not only find fish, but find you know quality quality fish. So right, absolutely. It's uh in in, in my opinion, there's a very uh, well, there's a guy that fished the local CBA tournament down there, which is you know one of the largest trails that's been around. Well, I say the largest, it's not the largest it used to be, but it's one of the oldest trails. I mean, on that lake, uh, his name was Gary Hutton. He passed away a few years ago, but he uh. He knew a ton about that lake. I mean, time it was built, the whole nine yards, had multiple, multiple wins. And uh, I, I can remember it like yesterday in about 2014, he said, you boys better enjoy it. He said, the lake's going to be on the decline. About 14 or 15. But he was right. Because, you know, if you could research all the results, sure, somebody catches a 10-pounder, 11-pounder, you know, everything five six years ago and in 14 15 in cba if you didn't have 20 pounds you wouldn't get 25th i mean that's just where the kids were they would be stacked so much you could uh there's multiple times we'd roll in on on a spot and it used to have you know a lot of big schools in it you know fours and fives multiple times we'd we'd pull in a graph and catch anywhere from 23 to 28 pounds and seven casts Bam, 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 bam. Just and then just roll on them. It's unbelievable. And you know, it could be due to age. It could be due to uh, a lot of people, you know, taking them home or uh, more something of that nature. You know, if you take a lot of people traveling in, they catch a personal best. Um, you know, then you know they some, some choose to mount it. You know, I mean that that that's their own God-given right. You know, don't get me wrong. But I'm saying yeah. if you take think of that size. And you get a lot of, you know, people coming in and, you know, they may not think about it. Then, you know, one's taking one home, one's taking one home, one's taking one home. You know, pretty soon it's going to, you know, put a dent in the fish population, you know. Yeah. But, you know, you, you know, you, you do have to take so many out. I totally understand that and everything. Um, so, you know, a couple of years ago, I'd called a, uh, a, I was fortunate enough to catch 11-7 in a Heartland tournament. I didn't have a very tough day. I didn't have six, seven bites. Caught that 11, seven. So I made a video. They asked me what I was going to do with it. I said, I'm taking, I'm taking her back to where I caught her at because I knew she was pulling up there to spawn. And so I made a video. You, I mean, you can, you may have seen it on there. Heck, I don't know. But I thought maybe I can potentially make a, a curve in everything. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And so I made the video. You know how much she weighed and everything. Let her go. And then. Right after that, uh, within a couple weeks, fish dating, you start seeing the so and so caught a double digit, cat, you know, hashtag catch and release, you know, caught and release. So now, you know, it's very good that a lot, I'm not saying I had anything to do with that. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't, but my hat's off to those people, you know, that, that you know, cherish those big bass because, you know, it takes them a while and there's been a lot of people involved, you know, to, to get them, to get them there. You know? Yeah, the I love the uh, you know when people kind of reiterate the the let them go, let them grow movement. And it's you know not bringing them home. And like you said, there's certain bodies of water where you kind of do need to bring some home. You know, where some yes. of them you know, there's just there's it's just too populated, and there's fish dying yeah. off because there's not enough bait or you know whatever they may be feeding on. Yeah. Right. So yeah, it's it's tough, but it's. I mean, there, it sucks to see, you know, every lake has, you know, what they call the waves, right? Where there's a certain age of fish that's taking up a, a population. There's, It's a mature age fish. They're going to die off eventually, you know, and it's, it might take a year or two, if that, for that next wave to become that caliber of fish. So it's kind of yeah. interesting to see how that kind of fluctuates. So, and I can kind of, re I can relate to that. And Cayuga, you know, Cayuga had a big fish die off. You know, probably 2010 to 12. I have some boys who listen to this that are Cayuga hammers. They can message me and tell me I'm wrong afterwards. But um, with it, it, I was told it was in the, next, the past four or five years where Cayuga really kind of skyrocketed. With what essentially is that new wave became mature. So now there, you know, it takes, you know. We, there was a tournament that I hopped in. I got second with 26.8, you know, and to win it took 28 pounds in a New York fishery. Where last year it took 31 
to win, which was pretty sweet. Like, and it's New York. No one really, you don't see that. What's that? Large mouth, uh, large mouth or small mouth? So the winning bags have came all large mouth. But they're, you know, uh-huh. into July, it takes, you know, 25, 26 pounds. And it, you, you'll see all small mouth in that bag, which is cool with these finger, these finger lakes that I've talked numerous times about is, you know, you can go out and set out and try to catch one or the other. You know, you'll find spots in pre-spawn where, you know, one cast you'll catch a large mouth, the next cast you'll catch a small mouth, and you'll go back and forth all day. And it's pretty special. And, and Chickamauga's, you know, I wouldn't say the numbers are there. But you can still catch smallmouth in chick, correct? Uh, yes, yes. A lot of them, you know, primarily, you know, on the, on the upper end of the lake and some, you know, at the lower end, um, they used to be scattered out a lot more. And there used to be a lot of a lot of big bags. I mean, a lot of big bags of smallmouth. A lot of mid-20s. A lot of them. But uh, it's, it, it's been a while. It's been a while on, on those, which they, uh, you know, changed the... Uh, Creel limit, size limit, vice versa, you know, tournament anglers, you know, in Chickamauga, you just allowed, just allowed the one, one smallmouth per person. So uh, you occasionally see one weighed in, you know, whatnot. But uh, predominantly, unless it's really big one or something, you know, somebody's trying to cull it out, you know. Yeah, I've heard they just get gigantic. And I've heard rumors of the Dale Hollow smallmouth and stuff like that. And, you know, whether oh, it's... Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure you know exactly I, the deal. I, my experience there last week, I, I found this magical place that uh, it, was, it was unbelievable. We, we have a, a lake here near the house that has a lot of smallmouth in it, and I'll go fun fishing and everything. I mean, it's deep, it's clear, and things like that, you know. And uh, so that I kind of, quote, took my place from that lake to the hollow. So I, I didn't win. But the Saturday, I mean, I sucked like 47. But let's talk about leading up to that because you're talking about giant smallmouth. Uh, I know a couple of people that fish over there a lot. But so I just run around and done my own things. It's got a lot of grass in it. A lot of people. It's probably. It, I mean, it was probably one out of grass. But I just went and done my own thing. Dude, I found a found this tree in like 50 foot of water. Right. So there's fish that are suspended 15. 18 foot in it all right and it's real clear and uh i can see them on uh garmin live scope and uh through the top water out there trying to you know, get some movement nothing's happening i thought man you know i was like i guarantee you that that's bass i, mean, I could just about tell by the way of looking at them but there's a lot of walleye in that lake too mm-hmm. and uh and it's musky so you know i was kind of I hadn't experienced that with live scope, so I'm still trying to, you know, learn a lot about it, you know, how they're showing up on it and everything. So I drag out, man, I, I got a dang swim bait that's, it's literally as long as my arm, all right? You're not going to catch anything on it. might out for the bait. Around here, not going to catch nothing, but it, you know, it makes fish show themselves. It's probably 20, I, I don't know how old it is. It's old. But I, and I've never caught a fish on it. But it'll allow them to show themselves. It's kind of like it's guys got their own packs. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it's a great surface. Like, yeah. yeah, I was like, I'm, I'm gonna try that. So I fired that thing out there, dude. There's the ungodly school of largemouth and smallmouth mixed together. There's at least 20, 25. Now keep in mind, you can see 10 foot deep. I mean, it's gin clear in this lake and area where I'm at. Sun just is like it just come alive, and the whole the garments just streaking out and i'm watching <laughs> well he come up there swim in that thing and hit the tail of it now I wouldn't even try to bite it they would just hit it you know swim up and hit it never even try to eat it bite it no nothing so immediately you know i was like my gosh you know this is the place here you know so uh if i could just get one of them to bite so i end up uh in the tournament go back on saturday and caught a, a under small mouth off of it because you got a, you're allowed one 16 or under and one over 21. It's got to be 21 or over. Mm-hmm. So uh, I catch that under, and then uh, it, it wouldn't help me because I already had one under, and uh, it was just a little bit, a little bit bigger. But anyways, uh, very next cast, I said to hook, tell my co angler, I'm like, get the net, get the net. It's this, it's one of them giants, one of them giants. And I can see it down there deep coming up. Sure enough, it was 
it was probably close to five pounds. I didn't even weigh it because I was so sick because it's 20 and a half inches long. Oh. Yeah, half inch short, and I was disgusted. And and after I caught that one out of it, those two, you know, it just spoke to them. You know, all, all, old fish, they're smart. They're they're like big deer, man. You know, they yeah. uh, they, they catch on quick. So uh, that was pretty much it. But I'm going to remember that tree. I'm hoping in the, in the fall that uh, whenever I get back that that, that place will pay off for me big time. So uh, may not, but uh, it's still a still awesome little place. Well, sure. isn't that what's so awesome about, you know, putting time, you know, on the water, putting time on your grass, you know, putting time yeah. in, in just, you know, keening in all of your senses on a certain aspect of the lake. And, and obviously more time, it, it more of that comes. But, you know, as you learn mo- more of a lake, obviously you put in a lot of time on the lakes that, you know, that are near you. You know yeah. how to react in certain situations. But now that you've found it, you know it for forever, essentially, right? For the rest of your life. And you can come back to those areas. And as you see that, you, you know, like you talked about how you, you, you donated a lot of money, but as you put in more work, put in more time, those mm-hmm. checks keep rolling in, those fish keep rolling in, and it only gets better and better the more you, the more you know, because that's the, you know, way, it's a way to better understand it. And that's what's, Absolutely. you know, and people, people ask, you know, why do you go out for six, seven hours and don't fish and you just graph? Isn't that boring? Well, it might be, yeah. <laughs> But, you know, after that six, seven hours a day, when I, the stuff I find there, you know, I can come back and cast to it. It's well worth it because a lot of times untouched. So it's nice. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's, uh, you know, I, 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 I agree with you on that. That's one of the cool things about drafting. You know, at had uh, Pickwick just a couple weeks ago. Uh, we were over there for the Wheel Series. Uh, I literally graphed, see, 42 hours <laughs> draft I, I did not and I'm not talking about I might have got on plane a few times but it was daylight till dark my left my left knee is two shade three shades darker than my right knee because of the, <laughs> of the console the steering wheel and uh, it was, it was nuts. Uh, so I, I, I tried to find everything that I could find in case I you know go back for whatever reason yeah, uh, you know, try to learn all I can learn about it. Um, but yeah, it's a uh, it, it's addictive, is it not? Yeah, no, one hundred percent. You know, I mean, if you ever have that magical day, you know, catching a big bag offshore, you're hooked. Um, I don't care. If you are. It's fun to catch them, you know, shallow. It's fun to catch them top water. But when you find that magical spot and you you know stars align and you make five casts and catch twenty twenty five pounds, you're like you're hooked you oh know? yeah yeah i mean you know i'll be honest i mean i this year before, prior to march february i had upgraded to an hds9 and as i think i spoke to you at the classic where i told you i'm still fishing out of a pedal drive kayak but i upgraded yeah. to an hds9 with total scan and prior to that my graphing was with 2d and a football jig to try to figure out where stuff was trying to use Navionics on my phone, and that was rough. But I learned how to fish offshore, and a huge shout-out to Alex Coral, one of my buddies up here in New York that taught me, took, you know, took, me the, took the time to take me out to Lake Erie. You know, we'd go miles offshore and trying to you know, learn how to fish offshore. And it's not like it's an unpopular thing up here, but just how, how to you know, learn the water, kind of – you understand how reading the water offshore and looking at and using your know, electronics – now, mm-hmm. I couldn't afford those electronics at the time. So once I got my own, man, it was it was game on. You know, this spring, I mean, I get called a psycho because, you know, putting in a whole day's of graphing on a pedal drive kayak is, is rough. I mean, you can barely walk afterwards. But, you know, once you find the areas, it's awesome. I mean, I, I'll tell you, the, when it really clicked to me was I decided to dedicate a day to, to graphing. And if I found something, I'd, I'd cast a little bit, and that was it. But I move on. I try to find more stuff. And man, I'll tell you, I came across this this one rock pile, and I could see the fish on it. It was a whole. It, I couldn't even count how many there was. So I went over it. And it's nice thing about the kayak too. You don't have the sound of the motor, so you can just pedal over easy, and you know you're not going to spook anything. And uh, I was kind of blown away about what it was. So I went off. I gave it 15 minutes. Came back again, 
and first cast in their personal best smallmouth, the next cast four pound largemouth, the next cast another small. It was just, it's unreal. And I'm, since then, I don't like fishing shallow. <laughs> I like <to laughs> put grass a little bit, but that's, I love fishing deep. I don't know. It's just, I, I don't know how to describe it. I really don't. Yeah. Yeah. It's I just, agree. One percent. Yeah. Sure. It's just a whole different ball game. And it's, well, I think the best part about it is it takes a certain person with a, enough willpower to be able to put in that hours, you know, and yeah. it's, so you have, but a lot of times not many people are willing to do that and don't, aren't willing to learn that. So mm -hmm. for the most part, you kind of have it to yourself because those fish don't see a lot of baits. You know, it's, I, I like that kind of comparison people have talked about, you know, deep fishing, especially up north, not many people do it. So you have a lot of times of getting yourself in front of a fish that's never seen a bait before. Whereas shallow, wow. they crush the whole time. Where So it's naturally, when you find fish offshore, you have a much easier chance of catching them than those fish up shallow. Which is kind of an inter interesting concept because I've heard it's, it's becoming the opposite down south because so many guys are starting to fish offshore now that shallow fish are becoming much easier to catch. I, yes, I agree with that 100%. Anywhere on the Tennessee River, it's... Uh... Gosh, it's uh, it's 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 tough. It's uh, yeah, a lot of people do it, and uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, I see it, you know, more and more and more that uh, you know, a lot of I say up and comers, you know, you know, may or may not have been fortunate enough to have been taught the unwritten rules of the game, like I was, you know, respect for the other ones, this and that, and uh, it's sad. I mean, I had guys uh. You know, just pull right in on top of you, and uh, sure, you don't own the lake and all that and all, but uh, when I say pull right in on top of you, I'm talking about right on top of you. I'm not talking about 50 yards. I'm not talking. Uh, no, I don't. I don't let none of that stuff bother me. But it's it's a fact of uh, you know, I look at the younger generation, and and I, you know, they may have seen it somewhere on the TV or something, and uh, so they just want to think well it's all good you know let's do it and uh you know pull in on top then it ends up giving them a you know bad rep and i, I mean i'm talking about literally 10 feet uh Agreed. from each other things like that you know so uh but yeah I, I would agree with that yeah the shallow fish i mean it goes hand in hand i think that uh you know in order to be a be a you know, a good <laughs> fish, you, know you got to be very versatile you know, in, in all aspects, uh, of course, everybody's got their strengths, got their weaknesses. I'm not a, I'm not a drop shotting guy. I've been working on it, but I'm still not a drop shotting guy. I mean, <laughs> my will be up here on Erie and you'll, you'll, you'll be good at it. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. My drop shotting uh, extent is a, is a half ounce or three quarter ounce jig in the thickest bush you can find. You know, <laughs> shaking it, sixty-five pound rig. You know, so uh, yeah. yeah, that's uh. But yeah, it's something to get on. But yeah, it is. Uh, you know, electronics definitely, you know, have have changed things, especially in our area and especially anywhere on Tennessee River. Sure. I hear that 100 percent, man. And oh my gosh, I'm pulling up on people—that's a whole hour-long conversation we could get into. It's just, I mean, yeah. I've seen. I mean, my first experience—I'll tell you this—I told Jacob Fouts this, and for listeners, I'm sorry. I'm gonna tell the story again, dude. My first experience on Chickamauga, okay. After the classic, uh -huh. you know how Douglas, you know, Douglas said maybe drive the van down there. So I was driving the, the Douglas van up north and I decided, uh -huh. you know, I'm going to stay in Knoxville tonight, but I'm going to fish Chickamauga for a couple hours. So I went to, um, Jacob had to remind me the name of the park again. Um, Chester, yeah. or Chester Frost or something. Yeah. yeah. So I went to that park and I decided I was just going to, you know, I was going to walk around the park and places, you know, that had access to fishing, and I was going to fish around it for a couple hours, see what could happen, see if I could just get one bass out of Chickamauga. That's all I wanted. Just to say I did it. Right. Yeah. I, I walked down to the bank where the, the river leads into the park, okay, right, the little bay that's in there. And uh, basically, dude, within the first 10 minutes, a boat pulls in into, you know, boats were going in and out the whole time. But this boat yeah. pulls in. I didn't think anything of it. He turns in, and I was kind of sitting in that, that inlet. Once you go in, it's the south side um, mm -hmm. once you come in off the river. And I'm fishing. Uh -huh. Fishing there, this boat starts coming right towards me. And I didn't think anything of it. He was probably just going to fish it as he as he got in, and he was going to fish it. I didn't care. But it was to the point where he got within 20 yards of me and stood up, 
got the trolling motor down, started casting out in front of me. It wouldn't move. And he just started casting. So I was, just, I was like, this is kind of odd. You know, maybe he's got a spot here. That's what he wants to fish. I, I don't know. So I just basically just picked up my stuff, and I walked another 100 yards down the stretch to like, get, get away from him. And I went to his backside, so not where his boat, boat was pointed to go. Yeah. Swung his trolling motor around and followed me up and kept casting at me. And I was like, really right now? And I didn't understand it. So, and and right. basically, I was like, I just got so frustrated with the situation that I'm like, you know what? This is not how it's going to go. You know, Chick is a place that's my dream. My dream, like, I'm not going to let this spoil it for me. So I, I left. I went to the other side of the bay. Basically, when I walked out, there was, like, 20 boats that had pulled in there and started fishing. I'm like, I'm going to end up getting in somebody's way. I'm not even going to deal with it. And I just pretty much packed up, and I drove to, and I visited one of the shops near Watts Bar. Went to go fish on Watts Bar, and I ended up catching, like, 10 drum on a jerkbait, which also made no sense to me. I've never done before. I mean, I've caught drum all the time up on, on Erie and Ontario, but I never caught one on a jerkbait. I'll tell you, that first cast with a jerkbait, when I hooked into, like, a 10, 12-pound drum, yeah. I was like, yeah. mega, PB large yeah. mouth. Like, I'm, I'm on top of the world. I see that drum come in, and I'm like, damn, these things are in here. Like, I was just like, I can't get away from them. <laughs> And that was my experience. So I was like, all right, we'll save it for another year. We'll have to head back down there, get some revenge. But, oh, man. Uh, talk about pulling in on people. Is And I'll, I'll send you a video offline here to uh, over to your Instagram of uh, a, a recent video I had where um, we're in the spawn right now in New York. And I know, you know, first thing, what I've been trying to do is go out, put some hours in the graph, and then, you know, try to see if I can find any post-spawners or any pre-spawners that might be coming up. Because, you know, you know you know how some of our lakes are in the, the glacial lakes, super shallow in the north, really deep in the south. So you'll have post-spawners up north, spawners in the mid, and then pre-spawners down south. So basically, I'll try to do a mix of it. And then once it's the afternoon, I'll go see if I can find any giants up shallow. Dude, I'm sitting out here in the way offshore, and I just get a boat that goes flying down the lake. I didn't think anything of it till I hear his motor die off. And then I hear it becoming louder again. Right, so he kind of fades out with the, the motor noise, and then I hear the motor coming back. And I didn't see anybody else pass me. This boat comes back and stops within 30 yards of me and starts fishing what I'm fishing. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, really? And then he starts casting towards me, and it was almost hitting me. And I'm like, man, like, I know I'm in a kayak right now, but, like, the lake yeah. is massive. Like, come on now. I, I don't know. It, that's a whole other yeah. discussion I can get into, and it's just going to drive me nuts. <laughs> Uh, I hear that 100. percent But uh, dude, what's what's a what's your career goal? Like, what do you what are you trying to? You know, where will you? What will you accomplish? What do you want to accomplish? Where you're gonna say, I've made it. You know, I've and then feel like, you know, you've accomplished what you wanted to accomplish. Um, gosh, that's a very good question. You know, I mean. You know, hopefully this year, you know, uh, you know, everything will work out, and uh, you know, if it's if it's meant to be, you know, God above, let it happen. It's just my opinion, and uh, you know, it's uh, if I can qualify for the tour, um, major league fishing style format, I I like watching it. Uh, I'm not sure how well I could compete with that because fishing, you know, with going out just fun fishing or, where, or whether even Seth and I are fishing a team event, things like that, or, you know, fishing with Jacob, going out with him. I mean, he's, he's absolutely freaking stick. Uh, you know, just seeing it happen, I, I personally don't feel I would excel in that area because I've been so accustomed to five fish limits, you know, that you, you have to change a whole nother deal. So, I mean, you know, I mean, ultimately, you know, qualify for, you know, for for the tour or fish opens, make it on my side, just keep moving forward to childhood dream. You know, mm -hmm. I've always said I've never try or attempt uh, unless, uh, you know, I felt that I was, you know, job secure, things like that, financially, everything, you know, play my card drive because I know a lot of people that's tried it, went under, you know, bankruptcy, lost their freaking homes, everything, guys just stayed up with credit card debt. Some living off crackers, waters. I mean, here all that. Some guys do make it, 
uh, some guys do not. So, I, you know, I try to be very secure and play my cards right. You know, if I feel like I'm in the right situation, you know, then it's all right. You know, I mean, I'm excited uh, about the rest of this year and even in 2021, you know. And I mean, the, the, the future, yes, there's a lot of opportunities. Uh, there's a lot that I would like to tell you right now, but I cannot tell you right now. Uh, but there'll be some big announcements within uh, the the next year for sure, uh, and I'm very excited about it. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm just going to take it and uh, run with it. You know, I mean, it's what I can. I mean, if I make it, I make it. If not, if not, I'll, I'll uh, you know, as long as I'm alive, I'll definitely be involved in the fishing industry uh, a lot more than what I am right now. And, uh, you know, just keep moving forward. Just try to be a good, well-rounded, uh, respectful uh, ambassador for the sport, you know, especially for kids. And, uh, it, you know, things like that. And competing is, uh, yeah, I love it. But still, at the end of the day, you know, I think of the sport in general, you, you know, abroad, you know, whether it's competitive side or pun fishing. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I just look at all aspects, you know, of the fishing industry. So, uh, that's awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm excited, you know. Thank you. Yeah, I'm excited for you. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's bright. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll let you know when the time's right, you know. Of course. I look forward to seeing it, man. I, I think there's some great things coming for you. But you, and you make a great point there is, is as long as you made a point saying as I'm doing well, I'm, I'm staying positive and I'm staying respectful. And there was a point where it's not the classic, and you know Saint, uh, Jonathan Crossland, uh, as well as in the Douglas team, and he had mentioned something along the lines that, and he said, uh, he said basically, you know, I'd rather be an average fisherman and respected amongst the majority than be an amazing fisherman and have no respect at all. Absolutely, and that, that speaks volumes. Yes, yes, yes. And and I I still feel bad. I've I've looked and looked on social media. There there's a young man that came up to me at the classic, and I remember his face, but I did not know his name. And he knew so much about me, and I knew nothing about him. And another guy come up and was talking to me, and kind of he kind of barged in on the conversation. And uh, I was trying to you know keep both people happy, you know, the back and forth, back and forth. And and then the other guys like, well, you know, he kept on us trying to answer his question, and I turn around and. Uh, the kid's gone, him and his buddy. I felt that tall. I was like, I want to turn to the guy and say, listen, man, sorry, no disrespect. You could have waited because I, you know, I was already talking to to the kid, you know, and so I don't yeah. want to be that guy with the bad rep, you know, like, hey, he's he's too good to talk to me or something, you know, and I feel so bad. But I, I've looked on social media a lot trying to find this young man's face. So, uh, was it, it at the uh, Douglas booth? Yes. yes. Was, it two, was it two younger kids? Yes. Yeah. Well, guys got, I think got I know black. who they are. Yeah, I think black. I know who they are. Jackson Sullivan uh, and Chase Millhole, and I had them on the podcast. They're no, two, they're no, no, two no, no. the high school no, anchors. No I, no, I know them. Okay. I, I, All right, cool. I, I, I was going to say. No, 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 no. Huh? No, it was, uh, it was another, uh, you know, I don't know if he was uh, – Gosh, I'm not good on my. I don't know if he was. He he, he was darker skin. Whether you know be, uh, Japanese Chinese. I really don't know. You know, that, but I mean his culture. You know, looked like that and black hair, and he had a ball cap on. Seemed like a super great kid, and had uh, another uh, young man with him. But uh, I'm telling you, I've I've searched for that some again. So if hey buddy, if you watch this, you send me a message, and I apologize. Because I'll just call you up you send me your number, you know. So if he watches this podcast, uh, <laughs> you definitely send me a message, buddy, because I apologize. It wasn't my fault. So, But we'll well, continue if, if to he, say yeah. he comes back. If he yeah. pays attention to you that much, I'm sure he'll he'll find this out there on the podcast or the YouTube scheme. <laughs> he'll find it somewhere. I thought you were talking about Chase and Jackson. I'm like, man, I talked to them a bunch. I'm like, I can hook yeah. you up right now. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, those two are those two talk about some future hammers, man. I mean, they're the hammers now to talk about some names that I'm, I'm excited to see what they're going to do. They're headed to Bethel, you know, one of the most well known colleges in, in college bass fishing. Yeah, hopefully, to see, hopefully, you're going to see a lot from them. So, well, dude, where can I know you mentioned it prior, but before we have our last two questions for the podcast, you know, where can people 
follow you and where can they uh you know, keep up with your adventures and your tournaments um uh, you can look you know follow me on uh, brent butler fishing on instagram and uh i got facebook page brent butler uh same profile picture so you'll you know pretty much know it's me i mean in baltimore tennessee um that's uh, pretty much it i don't do twitter uh or anything like that those two are enough for me i mean i stay you know busy doing a lot of other stuff you know i mean uh I've taught school for nine years, uh, high school building trades teacher, uh, coach high school fishing team, fish myself. I work for myself outside of that, you know, building uh, building stuff. I usually build a custom home each summer, and I got one going now. It's about 26, 26 2700 square feet. And uh, so I'm just busy, busy, busy. So, uh, you know, those two uh, social media sides are, are good enough for me right now. So. <laughs> I hear you. Well, everything will be linked down below, so everybody can just go to the description. You can follow him. If you want to see some hammer fish, you better make sure you're following this guy 100%. Yeah. Well, all right, yeah. dude, I got two questions I'd like to ask everybody, and then we're going to wrap it up here. But uh, first question for you is, if you could invite any three people to dinner to sit down and pick their brain, who would you invite and why? It could be past, present, and does not have to be the fishing industry. Wow. I don't like to wow. give a heads up on this because I like that spontaneous in the moment, what you're thinking about. Yeah. Um, three people. Gosh. That's somebody, tough. Yeah. Somebody you just want to sit down and have a steak and a beer with and, and pick their brain. Uh, that is that is tough. I have... Uh... Dude, I've been blessed and fortunate to meet thousands of people. I mean, thousands. I, I literally, gosh, I'll, well, I'll go back to, uh, I mean, I've, I've got to meet Ray Scott. I've got to see him, you know, talk with him, uh, everything local event here. I've met Hank Parker. I guess I'd have to say Bob Cobb. I, I'd probably like to meet Bob Cobb because he's, you know, I can still hear his voice, you know, watch the videos. I, I watch some of the old top 100s. 150s. I mean, to me, Bob Cobb's the man. Nothing against uh, Tommy Sanders and Mark Zona. Love. Great guys. W watch them. I mean, record every Bassmaster show and all that, but anybody within fishing that knows, you know, Bassmaster, has got, got to know Bob Cobb. They yeah, got to. You know, so I, I have to say that that's one. Um, got to show my dude Ronnie some love, too, man. Do what now? Got to show my, my dude Ronnie Moore some love now, too. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I, well, I've, 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 I've talked to him multiple times at uh, you know the the high school national championships. Uh, yeah, uh, seen him uh, for sure. You know, uh, God, you're, you're you're you know you're kind of putting me on the spot. But somebody I haven't met, I'm sitting here. That makes it tough. Oh yeah, that makes it tough. Sure. Uh, I actually had on I had on Travis Moran the other day as well. He's coming. He's he'll be his episode will be posted up here soon. Okay. Uh, what about some like childhood heroes or maybe I don't know if you did a sport or anything growing up besides fishing. Some you looked up to. <laughs> I, I I loved basketball. This is funny. I loved basketball. And then uh, my freshman year was the last year I got to play, and I loved to play. I wasn't really that great and all, but I loved the sport of it. And my dad was pretty much like so we lived 13 miles from the school. And it was tough back and forth in practice and things like that. And because uh, his work schedule, my mom's work schedule, and uh, you know, I mean, it's I mean, I didn't come from money. I mean, I didn't have my first vehicle till I was 18, and I bought and paid for it. So it just a little beater truck. But uh, you know, he finally he told me, he said, "Son, you suck. You ain't gonna know. You're not gonna go anywhere playing ball." He said, "It's time to hang it up. We need to go to work." So, you know, I knew construction already, but uh, so I focused on that, and I thought, man, uh, rod and reel, that's what I'm going to stick with. And so that was pretty much it, big turning point in my life. I mean, a lot of people may like, you know, may want to criticize my dad, but no, I love my dad. Both my parents were tough love. You know, he had to get to yeah. say, hey, look, you suck. Let's get out of here, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I saved we coach, need a little man. bit more of that in, in today's age. We do need a, yeah. little, a lot more of that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Everybody needs uh, tough love. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. I guess I'd have to say uh, somebody else. Uh, I 
I shoot. I mean, President Trump, I guess I always said back years ago that, uh, you know, 10, 15 years ago that, if, you know, I always thought he'd make a good president. I mean, first and foremost, I ain't getting middle politics, I ain't trying to stir up no nothing. I'm yeah. just looking. Yeah, you, you're telling me somebody's childhood. I can remember back in school and history, uh, th things of that nature. Uh, we all got our rights and wrongs. I'm just I trying care. to think some ways to talk I'm to you. This is uh, you put me yeah. on the spot. I did. I, I did. Yeah. I, I've met. I, I mean, been fortunate to meet thousands of people. Uh, gosh, uh, let's say one more. I. How about this? I'll make it. I'll make it a little bit easier. How about one person you're gonna invite for a good time? <laughs> I, I swear I don't know. I'm telling you, I'm. A, I, I mean, I've been to uh, CMA fanfare, a lot of hunting uh, and fishing, outdoors things. I mean, bone collector crew. I've got to meet all those guys. Be on the show. I've got. Uh, I've met all Primos guys. I've That's met. Awesome. Uh, I don't know. Randy Howe, classic champion. I've got to go fishing with him. Go talk to him on a regular basis quite often. Uh, I've met, I don't know. I get. I, I, mean, I got to meet Van Damme. It wasn't really kicked back or whatever. It just had an event. But, dude, I, I tell you, I don't know. I've been blessed, dude. I, I really, I don't know. I, That's I, fine. I really, you can, can stick with two. That's okay. I'm uh I don't I don't have any uh I Tom Brady you probably don't like Tom Brady I <laughs> I'm an Eagles know. fan so I don't mind Tom Brady anymore. <laughs> Do you what? Because no. I'm an Eagles fan so I don't mind Tom Brady anymore. We beat him so that's okay. fine. He can do whatever he wants now. I, you know I I'd, I'd probably like to meet Tom Brady. He's uh. You know, a lot of people don't like him, but, you know, if you really do the research on him, you know, he waited his time, set back third string, all that done his time in, then comes out, you know, and, you know, do, you know, he and his teammates have done, you know, I mean, within the Patriots, whatnot. I mean, his records, you know, it's it's great, but, you know, the guy, he set back and, you know, done his time. And uh, I don't know. I mean, he may be all right guy, and he may be a butthole. Heck, I don't know, but that's the only third person I can think of that I've not met that should probably be. <laughs> Make Tom Brady just kick back, okay. you know. All right. Hey, how's it going? Let's talk about life, you know, or just whatever. I like so, it. Uh, All right, man. That works. That works. That's about it. All right, dude. So, so last question then, and we're going to wrap it up here, is just your okay. favorite fishing memory. First thing that comes to mind. My favorite fishing memory yes, All right, would have to be, by far, hands down, it wouldn't matter if I won – the Bassmasters Classic, and I've been asked this question before. What you do, you know, what you kind of what's your favorite memory? And I and I'm serious, you know. Sure, I may not be able to quote describe. I may never win a classic. May never compete in one. Heck, I don't know. But to me, this is my classic. All right. After I won the 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 state tournament in the federation, they had Cast for Kids event. All right, on Douglas Lake. So I got to go up there and be a part of it. Uh, there were some other people that volunteered, some uh, uh, guys that were already fishing FLW tour and stuff was there. But it was, you know, it's it a good invite. And so basically, you show up with your boat, and uh, you got a lot of kids there. And uh, depend upon their uh, challenges, uh, whether they be wheelchair or not, or vice versa, they they line up. And obviously, somebody's in a wheelchair. Most of them. Pick a pontoon boat or something anyway so we're sitting there anglers are in a boat and the kids come around and they they pick and choose who that they want to fish with yep. and you take them out they got some red worms you can tie baits on anything else whatever else so this young man he's standing up there and he's pointing straight at me and just hollering as loud as he could I want him. I want the green boat. I want him. He just hollering real loud. So they brought bring him down there, and I've got pictures of him on my Facebook, and I can't remember his name, but I just remember the moment and the memory. It's unbelievable. So get him in the boat, and uh, he, his mom was with him, and she was like, you know, you're you're about to make uh, you know his day. And he just wanted to go fishing in the boat, and uh, he was he was autistic, and uh, 
so the, I never experienced anyone that with, with autism. So I didn't, you know, I would be saying, hang on a second. And she would laugh at me. It's like, no, you got to tell me either stop or go, you know, you know, direct command. So anyway, so, uh, anyway, so it was, we're fishing and whatnot. And he wanted to drive the boat. And I said, son, we'll do whatever you want to do. Sit down there. You know, so we put the life jackets on, kill switch. I'm sitting in the middle and put the boat in gear. And I'm telling him about, uh, you know, the hot foot and, you know, give it gas. And I told him, I said, forward, just push it, you know, all four. She can tell me. So he does and the boat barely starts to come up. Boy, and he gets nervous and he lets out of it. And he looks at me and he starts laughing. And I'm like, you got to keep holding the gas down. So I'm like, I'm not sure if he's understanding me or not, you know. So yeah. I literally want to reach over and push the gas. So he finally, he does it again. Comes up, comes back down. He stops, looks at me grinning. So then, long story short, he ends up going about 20 miles an hour with the nose up like this. Won't get the boat to plane out, but he's laughing, laughing, <laughs> laughing. You know, I'm like, this is awesome. So, That's awesome. Anyway, so uh, he never caught a bass. His goal was to catch bass. We had the red worms and everything. I was like, we ain't going to catch no bass. I mean, we might. No, but come on, we're in Douglas Lake. It was hot. Uh, most of the fish were 30 to 50 foot deep and things like that. So we were fishing there in the area. And uh, we had about 40 minutes left, 30, 40 minutes left. And kid you not, there's a school of bass come up. They wasn't big ones. They were 12, 14, 16 inch fish come up schooling out in the middle of uh, the pocket there, over like 60 foot of water, pushed up some bait. Gosh, well, he, he couldn't, young man, he couldn't cast a bait caster. All he'd use was a, you know, a push button or anything. So I had some more rod rigged up. So I had a rattle trap tied on. I pick that thing up, and I fired out there, boy, right in that school, and I turned the handle, two cranks. I give the rod to him. I'm like, reel. So he starts reeling. And, and he slows down a little. I was like, no, reel it faster. And and so whenever he did, I reached and pulled the rod. And I said, pull it, you know, pop your rod. So uh, he makes about a second pop. Boom. One hits it. He gets in. I'm like, please, God, don't let this fish come off. Please let this fish, let it be a bass, you know, not a white bass or something. Get this fish in the boat. And it's about a 14-inch fish. And that kid, son, hollered so loud. I can only can't even holler as loud as this kid did. <laughs> <laughs> just as loud as he could. And I look back there and his and his mom is literally she's been over and is bawling. And I started freaking out because I thought something had happened. I thought I thought a hook or something, you know, I didn't know what had happened, but I was thinking it was distress. And uh, I was like, You all right, you all right, you know what I'm thinking, Oh my god, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna have to get back to the ramp, you know, something and we wasn't three miles away, but uh she said, You do not know what you've just done for my son. And I, I, I literally sat down and started crying. It all made sense. She, she said, you made his dream come true. All he's ever wanted to do is go fishing on a boat and catch a bass. And you made his, and I've never forgot that. From that day on, I said, I'll never take fishing for granted. Whether I win, whether I lose, whether I'm fun fishing, whatever. I always, always, always think of that moment right there. And, I, and I'll never forget it. There's nothing to me no, no winnings, no trophy, no nothing that can compare in the fishing part as to that deal right there. It's just unbelievable. So that's incredible. That's, uh, to me, that that'll always be my greatest accomplishment in fishing. That's amazing, man. Oh my gosh, that's moving. It really is. I mean, even in in general, putting people on fish that haven't really caught fish, it's it's it, it creates a different feeling in you. You know, it's. That's pretty inspirational, really. It's motivation. It's awesome. I, I love that, man. I think that's a. I think that's a great place to, to call it here. But dude, that is that's incredible. Like I think that's a, that's a that is a story that needs to be, just shared in every single manner. I think people need to, get involved more in stuff like that, especially organizations that do that for kids and kids with needs and whatever it might be, whatever it is for the better. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely, man. Yeah, so if they ever have any events, you know, in your area, uh, definitely, definitely. I've, I've not been fortunate enough to make a couple more of them since then. They've had, I think, maybe two or three, and uh, uh, something's, you know, either come up or it's something, a scheduled event that I have to be at, you know, whether it's, you know, uh, points-related, things like that. 
and uh, or or you know work involved or, or family or something. But you know I'm I'm always thinking about those deals though for sure. You know I mean I I'll uh, I'll, I'll I'll be back to one for sure in 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 the future by far, you know, but you ever get that opportunity or anyone, you know, I highly encourage, you know, look up, you know, cast, uh, cast for kids. Uh, I think, uh, Jay Ellis is involved with them. I think they're one of his title sponsors or something works in with them. Uh, but it, but it's a great, a great thing. A uh, great organization. Definitely, uh, definitely life changing for a lot of people, not only yep. kids, but you know, people like myself. Uh, 100%. I'm sure it'll really make you, really make you appreciate stuff. A whole lot more make you you know have a different outlook on life in in my opinion 100 percent, i couldn't agree more dude awesome yeah. well man i just gotta say you know, i'm appreciative that you, know, you and i are on the, the douglas team here and we got to be able to connect that way and we got we met down at the classic obviously but i super appreciate you taking the time to come on here we've been talking a little bit over an hour now it's it's been a blast and dude you're always welcome on the show and you know hopefully this this covid stuff all goes away and I'm going to be headed down towards Chick. For, I, I got to get some revenge. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you give me a heads up. We'll see uh, We'll see what we can work out there. And uh, let's try to get on the water and mess around for a couple hours or something. Or might be able to, uh, you know, for a day. We'll, ju- we'll just have to see, you know, how everything goes. Do you have any idea around about what time, maybe? What month? July, August? I'm thinking, I'm thinking the fall. I mean, it all depends on this, this whole virus thing. And, you know, obviously still, uh, you know, job searching. So we'll see what, we'll see what happens. But, uh, you know, obviously we're going to stay in touch. So it's no worries. We'll see what, we'll see what goes on. Yeah, absolutely, man. Well, I, I appreciate it. Appreciate the opportunity, buddy. Yeah, you're always welcome. Anytime you want to come on, you have, you got a spot. All right. All right. Um, Sounds good, man. Well, you take care. We're, we'll, we'll talk soon. All right. Sounds good. See you. Right. See you. So I hope you guys enjoyed that podcast with Brent. We got him on here talking about a whole bunch of different things. I uh, hope you guys learned a lot. The man can talk, and you know, he does talk. You definitely want to listen because it's valuable information, and you can learn a lot. Um, the dude knows how to break down water. He knows how to pattern fish, and he knows how to find quality fish. So I think that's pretty awesome. I learned a lot from him. Uh, he's one that I, I reach out to when I have questions. So, He's an awesome dude. Go down below and follow along with Brent. I can't wait to see him take a full run at pro when he's able to. Um, it's going to be a blast to watch him compete. But go down, uh, follow along with Brent Butler on his social media. Super appreciate it. Uh, again, check out the giveaway on my Instagram page at Sears Angler on Instagram. And you can find some apparel for Sears Angler on Facebook and Instagram. The, the links, which is actually linked down below. Thank you guys again for watching and listening. We'll see you guys next time.